This scruffy man is Guan Ning, once a bank clerk. Six years ago, his daughter Little Orange was abducted, after which Guan Ning became determined to find her. His daughter was lost for six years, and he searched for six years. Finally, he lost his job, his wife, his home, but he wouldn't give up. Even if it meant looking for his daughter for the rest of his life, he waited for days in the middle of nowhere, just waiting for this car. Guan Ning had a special skill in throwing stones accurately. After forcing the truck to a halt with rocks, Guan Ning pulled out a person. This man was the trafficker who kidnapped his daughter six years ago. And Guan Ning beat this trafficker severely, then opened the truck, which was filled with children in cages. He hurried up one by one to take a closer look, but no little orange figure. That's when the police arrived. So Guan Ning was taken into the car as a suspect. On the way back to the police station, a woman saved Guan Ning. This woman is called Tu Ling, who is the head of Aladdin group. She asked Guan Ning to do one thing for her boss, and then he could get his daughter back. The novelist is Lu Conwin, a poor man. He has been writing novels for six years. No masterpieces, but the only thing he can do is write novels. He wrote a novel called Godslayer. The main character of Godslayer is a teenager named Conwin. In the book, the teenager challenges an evil ruler called the Ghost with Red Hair. But strangely enough, whenever the red-haired ghost in the novel is injured in reality, the big boss of Aladdin group will faint. Tu Ling tells Guan Ning that the novel will end in three days and the red-haired ghost will die. And he only has three days to do so. Guan Ning thought the mission was crazy, but for his daughter's sake, he was unwilling to give up any hope. Just like that, Guan Ning took on the task of assassinating novelist Lu Conwin, and the novelist teenager Conwin also embarked on the road to Godslaying. See Lu Conwin. Guan Ning followed all the way, posing as a fan of the book waiting for an opportunity to kill. But Lu Conwin, the loser of the novel, heard that a fan had come a long way to find himself. He was so excited that he dragged Guan Ning to discuss the plot with great enthusiasm. When he arrived in the imperial capital, he was on time for a grand event in the city. He only thought it was a holiday celebration and was dragged to worship the red-haired ghost. He later learned that the reason for the crowd's excitement was not the festive atmosphere, but their anticipation of killing and war. It turned out that the red-haired ghost had divided the city into 18 workshops in order to consolidate his rule. The workshops often fought each other. And today the only two remaining workshops in Imperial City have begun their final attack and killing. At that moment, the candle dragon rose in the air and dropped its gunpowder to attack the city. Before the chaotic drums, two dancers danced a strange dance. The people looked at the burning flames and shouted fiercely to burn them. It was all so crazy and weird. The thrill of collective killing, the self-brainwashing of blind worship, was chilling. After a day of burning and looting, the other workshops were all killed. At that moment, a pair of knights in red armor suddenly appeared. After the knights blew their horns, the crowd began to scatter and flee. Conwin did not understand the significance of blowing the trumpet, but he recognized that it was the cavalry of the red-haired ghost. In the real world, Lu Conwin returns the diary he found to Guan Ning. After his daughter's disappearance, Guan Ning often had inexplicable dreams. He recorded his scattered dreams in his diary. With the appearance of these words, last night Lu Conwin's words also came to life. Completing the update, when he came to the field, in the middle of a conversation with Guan Ning, inspiration came again, and he hurriedly took out Guan Ning's book and continued to write. While chasing the Red Armored Knight, Kawan came across a young girl dragging a boy. Kawan went upstairs to check and found the man dead. After helping the girl bury the body, Kawan asked him what the horn meant. The girl said it meant curfew. The red-haired ghosts ruled that no one is allowed to walk around town after sunset, said the two looking up at the sun. It's over. The sun is going down. A red knight came to them with an axe. Conwin did not want to leave the girl behind, so he put her on his back to escape the red knight's pursuit. After settling the little girl, Conwin was left alone against the fierce knight, but the armor was too hard, and Conwin used all his strength to make a crack in the knight's helmet. The armor immediately fought back, and just as the axe was about to come down, the girl came. Strangely enough, the knight in red armor did not immediately hurt the girl. He stepped forward and seemed to touch her. At that moment, the sun had completely set and the sky was completely dark. The knight in red armor instantly seemed to lose his strength, and his whole body collapsed helplessly. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Conwin hurriedly pulled the little girl away. After the story was written, Lu Conwin looked up and found Guan Ning had disappeared. By this time Guan Ning was hiding in the shadows and attacked Lu Conwin with a stone until he passed out. But when he picks up the stone again and is ready to mend the knife, 
A song catches Guan Ning's attention, the song was actually a song by his daughter, while searching for the song, Guan Ning saw a homeless boy, he chased after the boy and in a trance seemed to see a teenager running with a little girl, the homeless boy was obviously very familiar with the terrain, and Guan Ning soon got lost, fortunately, he once again encountered the traffickers who had kidnapped his daughter, after a struggle, Guan Ning finally subdued the trafficker, but under Guan Ning's questioning, the trafficker said that the little orange was dead. Six years ago, he was afraid that the child was noisy and fed the child more medicine, and the child did not wake up. Guan Ning could not bear such stimulation, grief and anger to strangle the trafficker. Fortunately, Tu Ling arrived on time and took Guan Ning away, although he knew that the Aladdin group had lied to him and that they had not found the little orange at all. But Guan Ning, who had lost hope, was still determined to kill Lu Conwin in exchange for the trafficker's life. He was still reluctant to give up the search for his daughter, and Tu Ling was a bit unforgiving. She and Guan Ning, an orphan abandoned by her parents and a father who lost his daughter, are both poor. In the novel, the young girl who has recovered a life and Conwin walks through the city. The road is littered with corpses, and a human head hangs like a wind chime on a tree. Back home, the little girl tells Conwin, a few years ago, her parents went out looking for food and never came back. She told Conwin to run before it was too late, because someone would come and kill him after dawn. Sure enough, the enemy came, a group of red-eyed men staring intently at both of them. In fact, Guan Ning found Lu Conwin again, who gave him the diary, tell him that, inspired by the diary, he had written Guan Ning in the novel. <laughs> Immediately afterwards, Guan Ning was even more shocked, because in the novel, the little girl saved by Conwin is called Little Orange. At Guan Ning's reminder, Lu Conwin thought of the one-eyed armor that was parasitic on Conwin's body, so the power of the one-eyed man came into play for the first time, and he turned into a one-eyed monster, wielding two large swords. He cleaned the mob to death, and as a result of sucking more of Conwin's blood, the one-eyed monster unfortunately had a relationship with Conwin and had to be controlled by him. Conwin told Little Orange to kill the red-haired ghost, but Little Orange was not afraid, but took the initiative to lead Conwin's way. In fact, Guan Ning also thought clearly, no matter where his daughter is, he will definitely save her. He gave up on assassinating Lu Conwin and instead protected him so he could finish his novel. At Lu Conwin's house, Guan Ning saw a photo. On it is a photo of Lu Conwin's father and the big boss of the Aladdin group. Lu Conwin told Guan Ning that his father and the big boss started a business together, and then there was an accident and his father died. Guan Ning realized that the big boss would definitely send someone to assassinate Lu Conwin again, so he immediately took Lu Conwin and moved the writing scene. Sure enough, two assassins followed, and these two assassins also had the same special skills as Guan Ning. One is not afraid of electricity, and the other is not afraid to fight. Good thing Guan Ning has a lot of combat experience. Agile to solve A. And at this moment, the little orange also led the empty text to the palace of the ghost with red hair. Outside the palace rows of red armored knights were sleeping. The two walked through the long passage and came inside the palace. The sound of drums became clearer and louder, just as Hollowgate wondered why there was no one in the palace. The idol in the center of the main hall moved. The huge red-haired mountain ghost shook the dust off his body, stood up, lowered his head, and looked at the two mortals like ants. His eyes were filled with excitement. He had been alone for too long. The red-haired ghost recognized Conwin as his brother's son. It turned out that the red-haired ghost was also human, and he and his good brother Jiotian were two great generals. But then the red-haired ghost wanted to become an emperor, or even a god. His Asian tried to stop Redhead, but failed. And the red-haired ghost, who became half-demon and half-god, obviously didn't want to be a good ruler. He treats people as playthings and makes them attack each other and kill each other. The red-haired ghost took Kung Man to a tree and told him that his father was buried under that tree. The two of them soon fought, but there was no way Air Man could be a match for the red-haired ghost. Even with the help of the one-eyed monster, a man and a monster came close to being killed. Not only did he not cause substantial damage to the red-haired ghost, even the one-eyed monster was wiped to powder by the red-haired ghost. Just as the red-haired ghost was about to finish the empty text completely, Little Orange stepped forward. She played her flute, hoping that her father would come to her rescue, because her father told her that if she played the tune, he would come to her rescue right away. But the red-haired ghost was so disdainful that he stretched out his tentacles and swallowed the Little Orange directly into his stomach. 
At this point in the story, Liu Kong Wen suddenly gets stuck. At that moment, another killer found him. And when Guan Ning arrived, Liu Kong Wen had already been stabbed. When he arrived at the hospital, Liu Kong Wen was taken to the resuscitation room. Guan Ning took Liu Kong Wen's computer and watched as his daughter was swallowed in her belly in the novel. His strong desire to save his daughter affected him. He suddenly realized that the meaning of his trip to Liu Kong Wen might be here. And he had to finish the novel for Liu Kong Wen. Guan Ning with Blue Gatling Machine Gun. Under a barrage of red armored knights, the red haired ghost was beaten beyond avoidance. More arrogantly, the red haired female ghost was beaten dizzy. Although Guan Ning is very powerful, the red haired ghost does not lose to him. The red haired ghost in a rage. A few punches to Guan Ning's wall. But Guan Ning could be the author, protected by the aura of the protagonist. How could he die? After dodging the red haired ghost's attack, Guan Ning and empty text together with a sword in the red haired ghost's forehead to split him in half. The red haired ghost died. And the little orange was successfully rescued. Papa, Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.